Hi everybody. So um, we're doing here yeah, hopefully a short lecture on uh, the last parts of chapter 6. So it's all to do with when the microbes are getting limited in terms of the oxygen supply. So they get suffocated and uh, we'll be looking at how they respond. What's the mechanism to deal with the fact that they can't get oxygen as much as they would like. So um, mass transfer is something, gas liquid mass transfer, this is really what it is, is something that you will spend a lot of time on in the rest of your year and a half with us. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we got to do some of the basics. Okay, so basically what we have is a volumetric rate of oxygen consumption. Okay, um, so this volumetric rate is equal to two separate terms, and they are equal to one another. Okay, so in short, and I don't want to make this long, in short, when you have a fermenter with a low concentration of cells, and I'm going to take the pen out. So at a stage, typically at the start of a batch fermentation, your concentration of cells will be low. Okay, um, if you have a look at the stoichiometric matrix or the response function when you only do respiration, you will see that if there's no issue with oxygen supply, this RO, which is the cell-based, remember if there's an R without a V, it's the cell-based, this cell-based rate is constant. You will note it um, from just running that matrix. Okay, so, so basically, given that this is constant um, and that cells are growing, you have an ever-increasing function here. Okay, now what will happen, uh, let's just show you that this as well is just a constant, unless you change the impeller speed or put more gas through the, for the fermenter, this will be a constant as well. So what we have is, you know, and, and chemical engineers refer to this as the driving force. So the driving force um, will, will really change. You will have this part changing according to how this part change. Okay, now please note, and, and I see some of you think you can dissolve a lot of oxygen in liquid as much as you can dissolve glucose, that's not the case. So the saturation, the maximum amount of glucose, uh, of, of oxygen that you can um, dissolve in a liquid is in the vicinity of 0.2 millimoles per liter. Okay, that's not a lot people, that's, that's really not a lot. Okay. So that's why you continuously have to sparge. You know, you will have something at the bottom of the fermenter where small little bubbles continuously rise through the fermenter and really dissolve liquid, uh, dissolve oxygen into the fermenter as quick as possible. So, so when we have a look at this driving force, what we see is as this increase, this should increase. Okay, so if this is low, the driving force will be low. Now, you've got to understand that the dissolved oxygen concentration cannot go above 0.2 millimoles per liter in this scenario, and it can also not be negative. Okay, so there's, there's really just a bandwidth of possibilities. If this is low, this will be low. Okay, and then we will typically have a scenario where CO is, you know, a significant fraction, let's say 70% of the saturated concentration. Okay. And of course, as you increase your cells in your reactor, you will now start increasing the driving force. If you increase the driving force, you will decrease the dissolved oxygen concentration. Okay, everything is fine. As long as this is not zero, for us, the way we treat it, everything's cool. They breathe, the little microbes breathe the way they like to. Okay, then we get to a problem where we now have a thick, so the... CX have significantly increased. Can you see here, this is now high. It's always getting higher. Okay, remember this wanted to be a constant. So if there's no issue, this will be a constant. But the issue, and that's really the switch point, and that's the point where we change the specification in the matrix or the response function. At a certain point, you will reach the maximum of the driving force. Okay, so the maximum of the driving force, remember, this is a constant. That's the value of 0 0.2 millimole per liter. Okay, so at its best, C0 will become zero. So we can scratch this out. And what we have here in this term is really the maximum possible volumetric mass transfer. 
you will get a corresponding cell concentration at that maximum value. And suddenly, you know, we can talk about regimes. Chemical engineers like to talk about regimes. There's a shift in regime. Okay. So if there's a shift in regime, suddenly the supply, and remember we're talking a fermenter, and we're sparging little bubbles, the supply of oxygen suddenly becomes a, a issue when the concentration of dissolved oxygen is zero. Just one point. If the dissolved oxygen concentration is zero, you should see that mass transfer is still happening. It's actually happening at the fastest possible rate because the driving force that we just spoke about is at a maximum. Okay, so this is becoming a big lecture on mass transfer. But just the last thing. So we have moved from a low concentration fermenter to a higher concentration fermenter and then we hit that, you know, that point where, where we reach the maximum driving force like we have in this equation above. You can see here that C0 is zero, so I've just neglected it. So this is our maximum volumetric mass transfer rate. Okay. Question now is, can we still further increase the cell concentration? Cells want to grow. You know, that's, that's, that's their thing. They want to grow. Now they've reached a point where, and at this point in time, you have an issue. Because this is now fixed. Okay. If you intend on increasing CX, and this is actually what happens, it does still increase. Okay. So you're going to further increase. Look how soupy it gets. You're going to further increase CX. Okay. But please note, this is a constant now. That's a constant value. See how that? And Calais is on constant value. So basically, if... A if, if you multiply two things with one another and it's equal to a constant, if the one increase, the other one got to decrease. Okay, you got to see this. That's important. So RO, you remember we've calculated RO to say if there was no issue of oxygen, how much oxygen would respiration have used? Okay, that's the RO we had in regime one. In regime two, we still want to increase. We still want to increase, but we now have to decrease this so that the product is equal to a constant. Okay, so that's mass transfer in a nutshell. Let's get back to this beautiful matrix of ours. So one thing that I find you don't always understand is that if I specify a theta and a mu, okay, I am specifying a energy requirement. Okay, so, so give, you know, basically if I specify... And when we do specify theta because that's more important than mu. Remember, you want to maintain yourself before you start growing. But if I specify a mu like I do here, I specify a certain production capacity. I can bring up this little mu factory. I specify a specific production capacity in my little cell factory or energy plant or power plant in the cell. Okay, so let's let's just have a look at this little power plant again. What's going to happen? Well. We know that we've got to put in some coal or glucose. we also got to put in some oxygen if energy is um, generated via the aerobic mechanism. Same for the mu factory, and, and I'll say this again. Remember, the theta factory will always be the most important factory. Okay, That's the last one you're going to abandon because that's what the cell needs to maintain itself. If it generated this energy, and please note the product from a power plant is energy or ATP. It's energy. Okay. So if we have generated this amount of energy, we can now say, okay, let's spend the rest of our energy for growth. Okay. What happens in the problem in 6.3 is that the oxygen supply to the cell, and it's really all about RO. We have just seen how RO has to get less. So this implies that the oxygen supply to my mu factory is now not enough. So suddenly I have a problem because I have been running, let's say, at maximum capacity, but now I've got an oxygen shortage. If I have an oxygen shortage, oh, my needle's going down. Okay, if your needle is going down, your mu is going down because you cannot generate the energy you want to per cell. Okay, what, what's happening there is, and, and this is the crucial part that you've got to understand, remember these specifications that we do in the matrix. It's small little alterations in the code, 
but it's a uh, it's 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 very important to understand what's happening. So what's happening in the t- ten scenario or the the six point three is that we say okay the mu that we have specified. Remember, if we specify a mu, we specify an energy specification. We have now seen that mu is going to suffer if there's not enough oxygen available. So what we got to do is we got to say we cannot specify mu anymore. Instead of specifying mu, we got to say what is specified by the mass transfer itself and the cell concentration we've just seen from the equation we had is that we rather got to specify RO. Okay. So, um, sorry about that. So, instead of specifying mu, we're going to be specifying RO. And that's really what happens in tutorial 10. Okay. It, it will imply mu, of course, is the growth rate. So, the growth rate, the, the organism won't just stop growing. It will just grow less because of the limited oxygen supply. So, growth still occurs after this critical point. But the energy that you generate from growth will now be less and in the matrix, the specification change, we can't demand the mu that we had before because the mu will be determined by the oxygen specification. And that's what we have in TAT 10. Okay, so now we get to the last part, 6.4 or TAT 11. What we have there is more or less the same scenario. Okay, so everything initially um, runs the same. So if there's oxygen available, you are going to respire. Okay, you, um, it's all about using this factory um, and the oxygen that is required to generate the energy. So oxygen and substrate will give you your specific mu. Okay, so and then you get to the exact same critical point where and we've shown it in the mass transfer where you suddenly have a limitation and suddenly RO um, is now decreasing. Now, if this happens, we have a thing called a facultative anaerobe. Now, a facultative anaerobe is kind of saying, okay, you take away my oxygen, and I am going to bring in, haha, a different new factory. So, we've got a little backup factory here. We're not using it when oxygen is available, but this little factory is very unique because it doesn't have to take in any oxygen. It just takes in substrate. You will actually see that it takes up a lot of substrate. And what does it make? Go, okay, have a look here. Have a look at this tap over here. There's ethanol dripping out of this factory. So it takes in substrate, doesn't require oxygen. It still makes energy. Okay. And really, we'll be using both factories. So this one will be running on the limited oxygen supply. And this one will try and maintain. So as I said before, it's all about the gauge, the mu gauge. Okay, the mu is for both factories together. So, you know, we want to keep it high. We want to keep it high. It wants to drop, but we want to keep it high. And that's why we bring in our anaerobic ethanol producing factory. So what happens in this matrix that differs from the one we had in T10 is that the mu specification is not removed. Okay, so we are going to say mu, remember mu is an energy specification. We're going to say try and keep, or the bug is going to try and keep its energy production for growth. Okay, um, but what we're going to do in addition is to also specify the oxygen rate. So we specify all three, and what we got to do is we got to open up via our specifications the fact that ethanol can now be produced. So this critical point is really such that once you reach it, oxygen supply is not um, sufficient anymore. You gotta you gotta treat the matrix um, in the same way that the bug will respond. The bug want to maximize energy usage. Usage. It's greedy. It's gonna try and maintain its mu. It has to maintain its theta. And you're going to say, okay, what oxygen is available? And based on what oxygen is available, you'll be specifying, you'll be opening up the fact that you can now produce ethanol and you'll be producing ethanol in conjunction. So, so basically your mu factory, you've got your, in a, you know, in a story sense, you've got two of them. And the whole, the whole idea is we want the needle to be high. Now you'll see in TAT 11, if you do it, unfortunately, mu 
now gets inhibited by the ethanol that you form. So you will be likely to drop and keep on dropping because mu itself will now be um, affected by the ethanol that you make. But what you've got to understand is the bug is trying to make maximize energy and keep its mu specification. Um, you can actually plot this yourself when you when you do your um, your, um, your tut, tut 11 models. So what you see here is this is what we had in tut 10. So I've just um, run the matrix of exactly the same mass transfer conditions. So this is the normal one where we don't have an anaerobic pathway, and this will be the one where ethanol gets produced. So really, this little deviation between mu in this time zone is really where the facultative anaerobe um, capitalizes on the fact that it can make ethanol for more energy and effectively the mu so remember that my little mu factory so the mu factory it has to drop it has to drop and it really drops because of the ethanol but it doesn't drop like the guy who had no you know this this little guy over here the green line had no way of making ethanol so at least in a section here, you have a much higher mu. So have a look at, at 18 minutes, uh, 18 hours. Your mu for your system without ethanol production is much lower than your mu for your one which has ethanol. Okay. Then there is a little switch point. Okay. And that switch point is unfortunately caused by the fact that the bug is now making ethanol and the ethanol in the broth is now changing the mu specification so at a point they switch so you can generate this graph if you play around with your tut 11. Um, lastly but definitely not least we had this picture right at the beginning of the year and if you have a look at the heading of this chapter it is called variations in overall stoichiometry what you have in tut 10 and tut 11 is prime examples of how the stoichiometry so you know we're talking what what we put in these yellow blocks is the yield coefficients i've tried and set up the questions in 11 so that you um, really see how the overall stoichiometry changes it's really just a function of the um of the response curve you know of the response function the response function return rates and from rates you can get yields so this is just a way of writing out the variation that we get from the response function. And this is kind of the cool thing in CBR because we can have one overall equation, but depending on what happens in the fermenter, we have different values for yield. This is according to me, very cool, okay? So just to, to note that as we go from a low cell system to a high cell system, we reach a point where the amount of oxygen is not sufficient for the cells they keep on growing they now grow at a lower rate than before and for what you will see is is that the yield coefficients now change the whole time so if you integrate it every little extra hour you're going to have a different stoichiometry we'll kick up with a constant stoichiometry that's the ro that i said was constant in the beginning when you only have respiration but later on, you'll see how the stoichiometry changes as the conditions change. So people, you know, think of this mu factory. We've seen there are different types of mu factory, you know, different type of mu mechanisms to generate generate. Mu, if we specify it, is a specification of energy requirements. So um, if you can't make the energy, your mu will drop before your theta drop. Okay, and we've got some two prime examples in TUT 10 and TUT 11. Enjoy it. Don't just focus on those answers. Focus on consolidating what you get numerically from Python with the story you had in this YouTube video. Good luck. I hope um, you get some moments of light. See you later.